What a beautiful way to begin our time of worship. Welcome to all of you who are here with us this morning. My apologies to those of you who are joining us online. I started it just a little bit late this morning, but we're so glad that you're joining us. I see several of you popping on as well. I have a few announcements of things that are going on in the life of our community. And then I'll see if you have any others. Remember that we are having a board meeting today and we will go down to the boardroom and have that today. It'll be brief, it'll be after the service. Please stay if you're on the board because there are a few things that we need to vote and move on. So please join us for that if you are a member of the board, which is the elders and deacons. And then we also, those are the voting members we also like for our um standing committee chairs to come and so they can report to us and hear what's going on as well. So we appreciate your participation in that. Um, it's hard to believe that it was back to school time already, but we're planning for back to school. Um, I know that you all are too. If you have someone in your family who's going back to school, either a teacher or a student, on August 1st, we're going to have a back to school um, celebration here at church during worship. We're going to have a blessing of the backpacks like we do traditionally before school starts. That is the day that we're scheduled to be outdoors. So depending on weather, we'll bless those outside during worship or we'll bless them inside if weather does not permit us to be outside. And then that evening, mark your calendars. And this is for everyone. Even if you're not going back to school, you can come to our celebration with us. We as a church have rented the pool, the community pool from 5.30 to 7.30. So we thought that would be a fun way to celebrate um, the end of the summer and beginning of a new school year with going to the pool to celebrate. So you do not have to swim. You can come watch our kids swim if you'd like. We'd love to have you participate with us. So there's no cost to you all for that. Just come and enjoy and we'll have um, probably some snacks at the pool as well. Light dinner type snacks. Um, are there other announcements that I am missing this morning? Kathy, yes. Wow, what an answer to prayer. You might have saved that for praise report time because that is great news. Um, we celebrate the Early Learning Center is going to be um, operational this fall. And we went from last week, you might remember, we announced, um, Kathy had us announce that we needed three more kids. And er enrollment is now, if anybody else contacts us, we're probably all full because we've got 14. Okay, she does have a waiting list. We have 14 students starting in the fall and possibly three more joining in January. So we're thrilled about that. And would you all continue to be praying for um, Early Learning Center, especially after a, a, such a different year and not having students last year. It'll be um, just different getting started this year. Any other announcements we need to share this morning? If not, then I want to, to invite you to experience the peace of God this morning. Would you take a deep breath with me? God says, be still and know that I am God. And I hope that you will find yourself centered in the presence of God as we worship today, whether you're in the sanctuary or experiencing that from home. We welcome God's peace to be with us as we worship I'm going to turn it over to our worship leader, Ron Berry, and I'll ask you to stand as you are able and comfortable.
be seated. Our scripture reading this morning is Mark 6, 30 through 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to the deserted place, all by yourselves, and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a, to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot to all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Now we have the children come forward. Actually, if you want to, Kenley, oh, Kenley and Rose are here. All right, come on up. Come on up and hang out with me today. So take our online people with us. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. You want to hold it? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. How are you guys this morning? Good. It's really good to see you. Kenley and Rose are here. And um, one of the things I've been real trying to be real conscious about, we're excited that things are um, opening back up and getting somewhat back to, you know, not exactly the way it was before, but our routines are coming back. And we do thank God and celebrate that, even though there are some uh, active cases bumping up in Roan County. We still want to be careful, but I don't want to throw away everything we did during COVID time because I thought it was fun every once in a while to explore a good book. And this was um, Matthew Paul Turner was one who said at the beginning when churches were streaming, it doesn't matter anything about copyright to me. You all use my books and worship if you want. So we've read several and many of you have commented that you really like them. Well, this is a new one that came out just a few weeks ago, and I pre-ordered it, and I was delighted it showed up at my door. It was um, written by him and another theologian that I really like who passed, she was a younger person, lived close to here, um, not too far from here. I think Pastor Kara had lunch with her one time. Her name was Rachel Held Evans, and she passed away, but she was a really incredible theologian. So we're going to read their book this morning, What is God Like? What is God like? That's a very big question. One that people from places all around the world have wondered about since the beginning of time. And while nobody has seen all of God, because God's far too big for any of us to fully see, we can know what God is like. What do you like about this page? There's a narwhal on it. I think those are so cool. They look like they're made up animals, but they're real. It's like a sea unicorn. God is like an eagle, sharp-eyed and swift, with wings so wide you can play under their shadows. God is like a river, constant and life-giving. When you grow near God, you'll sprout up strong as a tree. That's a um, scripture that I sometimes use in wedding ceremonies. It uh, talks a bit from Jeremiah, and it talks about how if we plant ourselves near the stream of God's love, then we are stronger because we're rooted deeply together. God is like a fort, strong and secure with walls that are mighty and safe. Inside, there are hidden places to hold you when you're scared or need a quiet place to rest. Do you ever build a fort? Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I cut a cardboard. Sometimes I put a cardboard thing towards my bed and sometimes go under me and my with my cat. My aunt's house. Okay, but sometimes you and your brother at your aunt's house, and sometimes you put a cardboard thing on your bed so it's kind of like underneath there you can get under. God is like a gardener, patient and nurturing. God plants, waters, weeds, and fertilizes the earth until every good thing on it seeks the nourishing sun and grows. I'm going to let God be the gardener because I did a little weeding on our mission trip and it wasn't my favorite thing ever, although I was pretty good at it. But I think I'll let God do the gardening. God is the flame of a candle, warm and inviting. With God close by, you can look to the light and see through the darkest of nights. 
God is like the wind, passionate and full of mystery. God is both here and mysteriously also over there. God is everywhere, swirling throughout the world, whistling across the mountain ranges, rustling through the trees, and pressing against your cheeks on a breezy day. God is like an artist, creative and unpredictable, always busy making and remaking everything brilliant and new. God is like a mother, strong and safe. You can crawl up in her lap whenever you want to, and she will hold you until you fall asleep. God is like a father, gentle and safe. He will put you on top of his shoulders and give you a bird's eye view of all creation. <laughs> I used to love to ride on my dad's shoulders. You like to get up on people's shoulders? I used to. Because you used to. Nobody will do it anymore, right? I can't. Like too big. Yeah. Yeah. God is like three dancers, graceful and precise. They move to the same music in very different ways, showcasing all of God's elegance and rhythm in your life. Wow, who ever thought of the three in one, the trinity like that? Three dancers. That's pretty cool. God is like a rainbow, vivid and full of color, a dazzling reminder of a promise and a hope for all people after a storm. God is like a best friend. I like that one. Faithful and true, closer than you even are to your brothers and sisters. And because we know what God is like, we know that... God is kind, God is forgiving, God is slow to get angry, God is quick to be glad, God is happy when you tell the truth and sad when things are unfair. She is your protector, he is trustworthy, they are friends when you feel alone. God hopes, God perseveres. What? is God like? That's a very big question. One that people from places all around the world throughout all time have answered in many different ways. Keep searching, keep wondering, keep learning about God. But whenever you aren't sure what God is like, think about what makes you feel safe, what makes you feel brave, and what makes you feel loved. That's what God is like. That's a pretty good book, isn't it? I like it. You think they left anything out? God is like, is there anything else that God is like? That's your question to think about, okay? And I want you to tell me, so I have your mom text me. I have your nana text me. If you think of something, you're out and about, and you think, oh, God is like this. I go, I have always thought that God is a little bit like um, floating in the swimming pool when I'm back floating and God is like the water that holds me up and I feel so peaceful. So if you think of something like that, let me know because I think we can do a lot more thinking about what is God like. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for being you, for keeping us warm and safe and loved. And we thank you for helping us to show other people what you're like as well. So be with us each step of the way as we know you are dancing with us through this life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Maria says it's nice to be up close. Yeah, if you can forgive me the shaky handheld footage, then it's nice to be up close to, for the online folks. We want to take some time this morning to pray together because we know that the prayers of God's people are powerful and they uplift and sustain us when we're going through difficult times. And so I'd like to put a few before you this morning and then see if there are others that you would like to include in our community prayer time. We have been asked to keep Dan Griggs. He was pastor here for a while, I believe interim pastor. His daughter, Beth, um, is with him in Virginia, and she's asked us to keep him on our prayer list. He had a kidney sur surgery that was laparoscopic, 
and um, they are awaiting some test results on that to see um, if there was any cancer related to that. So please keep Dan in your prayers. We want to lift Paula, that's a friend of Sandy's, and she's getting ready to have open heart surgery next week. So please be with her. We give thanks and praise that Robin's surgery went well this week, and she is getting ready to have another procedure tomorrow. Um, I believe that is a, a scope type of procedure, and so we want to continue to pray for Robin and Rodney. And that pesky spider bite she got on top of everything else, she got a big spider bite and her finger is swelled up, so please keep her in prayers. We give thanks that Richard is uh, back in heart rhythm again and doing better um, to where he feels like getting out and about. So um, continue to keep Richard in prayer, but we're grateful for that. Laura Booth got to come home this week and we'll continue rehab at her house, um, outpatient rehab therapy. So please keep Laura in your prayers and thank you for sustaining her. Talk to Brenda Strong this week. She's at NHC in Oak Ridge, and that's where she's going to be um, living. So keep her in your prayers. And she told me she's ready for visitors. So if you're vaccinated and able to visit and would like to, she would love to see you at NHC in Oak Ridge. Um, Sheila Lemons, her mother-in-law, uh, had another fall, and is she's at the hospital with her this morning. So please lift Sheila's mother-in-law in prayer as well. Are there others we can include in our prayer time today? What was his first name, Kathy? His first name is Eddie. Eddie. Eddie Evans. Eddie Evans um, and he had a really bad car accident and has had um, surgery already on the spine. And they're... Well, they did the surgery on the legs because he had broken both legs. Okay. They haven't been able to uh, fix the broken one in the spine. Sure. Okay, so he's had um, surgery on both legs and needs surgery on his spine, which will be upcoming. So please keep them in prayer. Autumn, did you raise your hand? Absolutely. Autumn's grandfather has been diagnosed with lung cancer, and he um, is in the midst of about 17 treatments. So please hold him in prayer. You all are attending some baptisms this afternoon, Tibby told me, so that's exciting. Josh Snipes that comes to our youth group, he and his family go to Glen Alice a Christian Church, but he's uh, involved in our Wednesday Night Live program. He's being baptized today, and Megan is the Okay. That's exciting. So they're going to be baptized in the Lake River? Okay. Okay. And, um, uh, Russ Cooper is doing a Jackie um, Robert's son in law. Mm -hmm. They will be doing their baptism today. Great. That's really exciting. So lift up Megan and Josh and their baptisms this afternoon. Ready? Okay, so she's still in the hospital as far as you know? Yes. Okay. Mm. Okay. 
So we want to lift up Judy Giles. Thank you because I had misplaced the, li the list that I originally had. Judy D Giles had surgery this week um, to get her carotid artery cleaned out and she is doing better, but she is still in the hospital at this point. And we want to lift up um, all those who have been exposed to COVID, but we have a couple in a couple of folks within our church membership that have been exposed. Um, one that I know is positive. Um, so please continue to be vigilant and get those vaccines if you haven't and um, be safe around one another. Take precautions. Are there any others that we, yes. Okay. Wayne has been, Wayne Richardson has been at Methodist Hospital in Oak Ridge and hopefully get to come home in a couple days. He's been there about a week. Thank you. Let's go ahead and take these that we have spoken out loud and the ones that remain unspoken on our hearts and minds and we'll carry those to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you today. You are a loving and gracious Father, listening to our needs and concerns, hearing us, carrying us. We ask for you to sustain, especially these names we have lifted on our prayer list that are in need of your healing. We lift Dan and Paula, Robin, Richard, Laura. We continue to lift Miriam. We lift Sheila's mother-in-law. We lift Eddie Evans as he recovers from that car accident. We lift Autumn's grandfather as he is taking cancer treatments. We lift Judy and thank you so much, Lord, for bringing her through um, a, a tough heart procedure. We ask you to watch over her and continue to bring healing. We ask you to watch over Wayne and to bring healing to him. We ask for you to be close with all those who are awaiting COVID test results and those who are um, positive with COVID to minimize those symptoms and to help us keep safe from one another, with one another, because we love one another. God, we thank you for Megan and Josh's baptism today. What a delight that is. We're so thankful for them. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers for enrollment for our Early Learning Center and ask you to watch over them as they prepare for a new school year. Lord, we ask that you would help each one of us to remember the rhythm of rest and how important it is for us to not only rest and get sleep, but to come and rest in you to rest in our relationship with you, to not always have to be doing, but sometimes to be still and know that you, in fact, are God. We thank you for your abundant love, for the peace that is ever present with you, and for the way that you care for us so deeply. We thank you for the example of our friend and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and ask that you would help us to follow daily in his ways. In his name we pray. Amen. I'd actually like to ask everyone to join me if you'll turn to 572. We're all going to do this special music.
Thank you for giving us that special music today, all of you. And what a good reminder that is as we talk about Jesus coming and asking the disciples to come away to a quiet place and rest a while. I was three years old and I heard the words of the President of the United States of America. He was on TV and I distinctly heard him say, we will not rest. So I told my mom what that meant. I did not need to take a nap. The President said so. Of course, he was not so much talking about toddler nap time as he was talking about we would not rest until the hostages in Iran were safely returned. But I heard as much as I needed to hear, no nap for me. That's the way it goes when we're young, we're resistant to rest. We fight nap time and bedtime and even though that's exactly what our tired bodies desperately need, and hopefully we have someone in our lives that loves us enough to help us get that rest we need. Give us a few years and we're begging to sleep in, we're begging for a nap. I have directed and counseled a whole lot of camps at Bethany Hills and a couple of other church camps, and it always tickles me that at the younger kids' camp, the kids just really dread that nap time after lunch. We call it fog, feet off ground, or fob, feet, off bunk, feet on bunk. And they just fight it. They don't like it. So myself and some other leaders have been known to tell the harmless fib to that age group that it is a state law that mandates <laughs> that we rest after lunch at church camp. And I think God can forgive us for that. But starting with middle school camp, we meet much less resistance to fog time. And by the time we get to high school camp, it's a favorite activity of campers and counselors alike. Of course, rest time is really more for the counselors than it is the campers anyway. But rest is important. President Carter did not sanction nap time. He did not sanction rest, but Jesus did. Rest is not something that our American culture values as much as some other countries and cultures do. We don't see American businesses closing in the afternoon so there could be a culture-wide nap. You've heard of that siesta time. That actually happens in some other countries. We are encouraged to fill every waking moment with activity, and we do it out of necessity to meet the demands of work and family one preacher said recently, I think I've forgotten how to rest. And I doubt, I think that would be true for many of us. We don't know how to rest. We don't know how to sit still very well. Being a servant of God, and I'm not talking about being a pastor, I'm talking about being a Christian, being um, a follower of the ways of Jesus, that's tiring work. And Jesus' disciples were doing a lot of the essential work at this point in Mark's gospel when Jesus asks them to come and rest. They had come back telling them what they had experienced because Jesus sent them out to proclaim God's kingdom, to heal people, to teach. And they had done it in his name. And when they came back and they were gathered with Jesus, the crowd pressed in on them, the crowd wanted their attention. They wanted them to keep going, to keep healing. They were so busy attending to the needs of people that they didn't have time to eat, the scripture says. Have you ever been so busy that you've forgotten to eat? It happens sometimes. If I forget to eat, this condition befalls me, and I call it hangry. Have you been there? I get so hungry, I can get a little angry. So if I ever seem mad or disgruntled to you and it doesn't seem justified, maybe just slip me a snack. It's a good way to deal with me. Ask me if I've eaten. They didn't even have time to eat. They weren't making time for meals. They were busy. In our time, we sometimes wear our business like a badge of honor. It means we're important, doesn't it? Someone asks how we're doing. We're good, we're good, but I'm busy. I'm busy, busy, busy. I noticed real early on in my ministry that ministers are the absolute worst at the busyness game. They like to brag about it. They like to wear it like a badge of honor and compare their 
nonstop motion. But I'm here to tell you being busy isn't something to be proud of. Busyness and exhaustion are not the goals of life. If you're so busy that you don't have time for your family, you don't have time for your friends, you don't have time for your lunch or your God, then you are in trouble. You're too busy. I notice that Jesus does not congratulate the disciples on being busy. In fact, as their leader, he sees what is needed and he sees that that is rest. When he sees that they are so overwhelmed, they don't have time to eat, he makes a suggestion. Come away by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. He doesn't say, you know what, let's work through lunch so we can teach and heal more people and get more stuff done. Jesus knows that we cannot be proper representatives of God's love and grace if our own human needs are not met. We need to eat. We need to rest. We need to be still with God. The culture is not the only place that people are busy. The church can be a place of busyness too, can't it? We've gone through a period of rest. It was sort of forced rest. But in our normal seasons, we're busy. We want to offer a lot of things to do. We want to serve God. We want to do more. We want to have the best programs for all ages. A sad little nursery rhyme goes like this. Mary had a little lamb. It would have been a sheep. But then it joined the local church and died of lack of sleep. <laughs> that is not my goal for you all. Okay? We have to be careful not to wear each other out in the doing of ministry. And I think we're at a pivotal time where we can say, yes, this is what everything looked like before COVID. And yes, we're ready to get back to a lot of things. But how can we have healthy patterns? How can we still allow people to rest and not wear out volunteers with the doing of ministry? We have to remember to rest in God's presence as well. The need for rest is one reason why in a, in a summer, in the summertime in general, we take a break from some of our programs to give our leaders time to rest. Mother Teresa, she was a tireless servant of the Lord. I think I used this quote not too long ago when we talked about some of the myths. Remember in May when we talked about half-truths? But she said this, I know God won't give me anything I can't handle. I just wish he didn't trust me so much. Being a servant of God can be overwhelming, and we need to challenge the notion that being constantly busy is a source of doing things right or having it all together. God created us to work hard, but also to rest. Rest can be just as important as work. And you know how I know that? Because of the creation story. I think my battery pooped out. Yeah. So you may have to turn me up here, please. Our creation story was not complete until the seventh day. And what happened on the seventh day? God didn't create anything that day. God rested. That was when creation was complete. Come away for a while and rest. And it's not just a suggestion from Jesus, but it's something that he knows the disciples must do if they're going to continue to minister to the hurting people who are demanding their attention constantly. Remember, too, not just the creation story, but when the law was given to God's people through Moses on Mount Sinai, one of the commandments was to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy, honoring the rhythm of rest just as God did at the end of creation. That's one of the Ten Commandments. I have a friend, Rob, who will say that's a commandment, not a suggestion. See, it's not even so much of a fib for me to tell little kids it's a law to rest. It's God's law, at least, right? Got to rest after lunch. Now, I don't miss COVID quarantines and closings. And there may be some of that if we have a big surge here again. 
We still need to be cautious. It's not over. But for the most part, our regular routines are starting to resume. The one thing I will miss about our downtime is the rhythm of rest that it granted us naturally. And we sort of resisted it at the time. There wasn't even an opportunity to do so much. And so we stayed home more. We did simple outdoor activities. My brain felt less cluttered. If I want that same peace now, I have to intentionally protect my schedule from activities. The break will not come naturally. We have to be intentional about creating that, sp that space. Come away to a deserted place and rest, Jesus says. Over 16 years of ministry, it has happened on occasion that someone falls asleep during church. Yep, sometimes they even fall asleep during what I thought was going to be just a hit sermon. <laughs> and I look back and someone's taking a snooze. I'd like to get kind of miffed about that, but that's my own ego getting in the way. So I have to say, I don't mind it if deep down, if church is the place where you can come and everything feels safe enough for you to catch a nap in the pew, go ahead. It happens every week we're going to have a chat, but occasionally if you need to nod off, I'm going to say you can do it. Look at the, these troublemakers are already like, yes. She said it from up all bed. <laughs> Honor the Sabbath. Keep it holy by resting, even during the service, if you must. You know, the Puritans didn't do it that way. I was already um, had my thoughts together on this topic, and David came across this ridiculous article this week. Do you know what they did? First of all, Puritan services were not one hour start to finish. You know that, right? I just want you to know a few of the tactics that pastors had to wake up sleeping people in church. <laughs> this is about a pastor. Alan Bridges has been, been chose to wake the sleepers in meeting and being, such, being much proud of his place, much needs have a foxtail fixed to the end of a long staff. So picture a very long stick with a fox's tail on the end wherein he may brush the faces of them that will have naps in time of discourse. Likewise, a sharp thorn where he may prick such who must be sound asleep. Okay? So I'm just saying there are options. There are alternatives if y'all get napping too much on me. Anyway, I give you the whole article. It's hilarious. These things that they did to wake people up. I like to read fiction books, and one series that I enjoyed going through was by a Christian author, Beverly Lewis, and she writes, she tells stories about the Amish community, the Amish communities in Pennsylvania, and sometimes I found myself a bit envious of the way they observe the Sabbath. There's a young woman in the story who does her baking the day before, so there is no, there's not even cooking work to do on the Sabbath. There are no chores done on the Sabbath day. It's truly a day for spending time with God in worship and visiting with family. No other tasks are to get in the way of that vital time of rest. Now, I don't want to become an, uh, I don't want to go live in an Amish community and have to abide by all those laws. I don't want to be a Puritan pastor, well, we know I wouldn't have been anyway, right? But I'm sure not going to grant any of you the power to tickle people with a fox tail on a stick while I'm preaching. I think that would be more distracting than would be worth it. I'm not advocating returning to blue laws. I really like it that I can go out and eat, go to a restaurant after church if I want to, or go to uh, Walgreens if I need to run in and get something but the intentionality with which some of these communities honor the Sabbath is something to envy and something to imitate, if possible. Keeping Sabbath time is something I could be a lot better about practicing. The world in Jesus' time needed more love and more compassion. Even as Jesus arrived with his disciples to the place where they were going to rest, the crowd was hungry for what Jesus had to offer, and so they demanded 
his attention. They pressed in on him. And Jesus had compassion for the public. He saw that they were hungry for what he had to teach them. He saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. And it moved him. I'm so grateful for Jesus' example of compassion. But we are not Jesus. That's a pretty important lesson for us to remember. We are not Jesus. We, like the disciples, need to take time away to go to a quiet place and rest. And I don't know about you, but it's a lot easier for me to show that kind of Jesus compassion to others if I've had enough rest myself, if my needs are met, if I've cared for myself. Compassion is easier to give when you're rested. Taking care of yourself is vital. Rest is essential if you're going to keep doing the work that God calls you to do. And so I'm going to commit, I'm going to ask you to commit to um, some practices of Sabbath rest this week. God desires a little more from us than the frantic pace at which the world tells us to operate. So I'm going to ask you to find a blank spot on your bulletin if you have one. To write this down or open up your phone and take a note, however you want to do. If you're a writer, write this down. Write down one thing that you will not do this week. This is how you find a little bit of that time. One evening that you will shut down your computer when you would normally maybe scroll Facebook or answer emails. One evening or one hour that you might just turn off the cell phone. Not even play those little fun games at night that I do to keep my brain, to kind of unwind my brain. One appointment that you will not make. I'm not talking, don't cancel a doctor's appointment. But I'm talking about extra things that you will not do this week. One obligation or opportunity that you can forego. All right, so that's, that creates a little time or space for us. And the second thing is now write down one thing that you will do, actively do, to rest. Maybe a walk that you will take with a friend or a spouse or just by yourself. I have some good talks with God when I'm walking. One game you might play with a child. We, my son, I don't, I'm not sure if he knows that non-electronic games exist anymore. But we have some board games, and that always brings us together as a family. So I'm going to pull out one of those that I just got. One opportunity that you will take to sit. Maybe there's a great view at your house. I've been to some of your houses. I know the views. Sit. Enjoy what God has created. Sit alone. Sit with others. But maybe not in front of the TV just for a few minutes to contemplate your blessings so that you might go to bed grateful and wake up rested and I'd love to hear about how this goes for you this week tell me of your Sabbath practice tell me what you did I want to see what you discovered by doing that was it challenging was it rewarding God has called us to come away to a quiet place and rest and while we can find our when we can find our Sabbath rest we feel more content, more relaxed, maybe even more compassionate towards others. May God bless us as we attempt to follow the commandment to observe the Sabbath. Let us pray. God, sometimes we give in to all the demands that are at us, that demand our attention, the things that others tell us we need to focus on. And we ask this week that you would help us make time and space for you that you would help us to be intentional about nurturing our relationship, that we would stop all the doing and simply be, and be in your presence. As we come away to a quiet place with you and rest. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. An essential Sabbath practice for me on these holy days when we gather for worship is to gather around the communion table. And so I want to invite you, if you're here with us in person, to get your communion elements and prepare to receive them. If you're at home, would you prepare your communion elements as well so that you can join us? So the time when he called them to come away and rest was not the only time he called them together as a community. 
when he knew that his days were numbered and they were gathering together to celebrate the Passover, he called the disciples to them and shared this meal with them. And in it, when he did that, he created this time of remembrance, a moment of Sabbath in our busy lives when we stop and remember that we are called to the table of the Lord and that there are no boundaries to that table because it's Christ himself who invites. And so we are welcome at God's table. And as they were eating together, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and broke it and passed it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks for it, he passed it to them and said, drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Each time you do this, do so in remembrance of me. God, we thank you for these gifts and for refreshing us at your table. In Christ's name, amen. As we prepare to leave this place and take our faith with us, we want to sing a hymn together. It's on page 576, so join us, and um, I'll ask you to stand as you are able and comfortable. We're talking about this song, is my faith looks up to me, so we invite those of you who are ready to begin a faith journey that might be new for you. If you're wanting to make an initial profession of faith, we invite you to come as we sing this hymn like to become a part of First Christian Church, then we invite you to come as we say, uh, my faith looks up to thee.
way after I dismiss you if you are serving on the board this year. And as we go forward, please go with this blessing. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ, fill, fill you with 